today we're at the Ohio Theater in downtown Columbus, Ohio. This ticket booth is only used during the summertime during the matinee shows because they're unable to put a computer into this box. So if you do need to get a ticket, it's right there next to the mirror. Come on inside and let's check this place out. Prior to the Ohio Theater, it was the site of the old Columbus City Hall until it had burned to the ground. The Ohio Theater was designed by the noted architect Thomas W. Lamb. Of all the theaters he designed, he noted the Ohio as one of his most successful. He intended to separate patrons from their daily lives by creating a luxurious fantasy atmosphere inside. It was furnished by the New York designer Anne Dornan. Each room had its own theme. Dornan's favorite was the Africa Corner, which she decorated with authentic pieces from her travels. The theater also featured lavish men's and women's lounges, including separate smoking and telephone rooms. A female smoking room at that time was absolutely unheard of. Built by the Lowe's Theater Chain in partnership with United Artists, the 3,096 seat Spanish Baroque Movie Palace opened on March 17, 1928. The first film shown was The Divine Woman, a silent film with Greta Garbo. Shown here is the original conductor's table. The gauge on the far right side showed the feet per second that the film was traveling. You obviously wouldn't want the orchestra playing an action type sequence during a love story. Speaking of orchestras, the Ohio featured its own orchestra and a Robert Morton Theater organ which is still in use today. For the next five months you had silent films and the orchestra. But in August of 1928, all that changed when sound films were introduced. The great popularity of these talking pictures reduced the need for theater chains to offer expensive live entertainment along with the films. Shown here are some of the original pictures of the Ohio Theater. During World War II, movie theaters were busier than ever and Ohio was no exception adding late night shows for war plant shift workers. War bonds were heavily promoted and sold in the theater lobbies. In the late 1940s, television became popular. Movie attendance gradually decreased. Attendance further decreased when residents began moving from the cities into the suburbs, to a point that in February 24, 1969, the Ohio Theater closed. A local development company bought the theater with plans to build an office tower on the site. Members of the community rallied to raise enough money and under that the Columbus Association for Performing Arts or CAPA was formed. Shown here is a 21 foot high chandelier which weighs a couple of tons. It takes seven workers about seven to eight hours to actually hand crank this down to the ground so that they can change the light bulbs. When this chandelier was being constructed the designer said there was something missing. Somebody had remarked that what it needs is flying horses and lo and behold flying horses were added.
Kappa was able to use the groundswell of popular interest in the theater to convince businesses and government leaders to support saving the theater. In late 1969, enough money was raised to begin presenting shows and concert under the management of Kappa. Now the oval and round thing were part of an intercom system because this particular area at that point in time was a coat room. Then in the 1980s, an adjacent building with expanded lobby space as well as offices and rehearsal rooms, the Galbraith Pavilion was built. Come on, let's check out the basement. What I found down here is that there are two practice facilities for the symphony, which are both soundproofed, as well as there's an area for the dancers and ballerinas to work out, which is also soundproofed. Here on the left is the original walls down in the basement. They did not touch them. But we're not done with this beautiful old lady. There always has to be a ghost story or two. During my journeys, I found that the cleaning crew regularly finds a woman in black roaming the halls. In addition, there's a second ghost that's playing host to this beautiful building. His name happens to be Charlie and apparently he is an ex-employee. What he basically does is he takes the workers' tools and hides them. Today it is the home of the Columbus Symphony Orchestra, Ballet Met, the Broadway series, Opera Columbus, and Kappa Summer Movie Series. Thanks for watching. Now get out and explore.